Uh, welcome to GUI and in web browsers weekly call for the 1st of April 2020. Uh, this week, I see we have an action packed agenda, so I'll maybe jump straight into it. Uh, oh, this is me sharing my screen. Please note if you can see my screen. Perfect. <laughs> All right. Uh, so the first uh, is sort of like a shout out and also a highlight of how IPFS adoption is progressing. Uh, Ethereum project uh, is using IPFS and uh, ENS for hosting their website. So Ethereum uh, .h, uh, ETH is uh, ENS name which you can uh, load in uh, any web browser that has IPFS Companion installed or has a support for ENS resolving. If not, you need to add that link suffix. And just for the purpose of demonstration, there is this IPNS colon slash link, which later we'll talk about Opera and why this link is important. But for now, if you open this, you will notice that on my machine, I have IPFS Companion installed this beta version, which supports subdomains. So it automatically, what happened here is uh, IPFS Companion uh, redirected ethereum.eth to local gateway, and that gateway resolved the DNS link using ETH DNS resolver. And in the end, everything ended up on this subdomain, which gave not bad user experience on the address bar. Um, so that's that's it. That's a pretty cool announcement yeah, and that demonstration. That's huge. Yeah. I, I still feel like we need the the animated, the cinematic version of all of the hijinks that take place in order to actually make that happen. I, I do take issue with that it's the, a good experience at the user experience at the end, given that there's a big padlock with an anti through it, saying that it is not secure. So there's some work to be done, but still, from a community adoption standpoint, it's huge. And the fact that Vitalik was uh, shouting it loud and proud on Twitter was massive. Yeah, definitely. And just to address the padlock, it's Firefox only problem, and there is an open issue which is scheduled to be closed soon. Because it's they, so close. It's so close. So the moment they will hard code, the problem here is uh, Firefox does not trust the local host name because it may be hijacked by DNS resolver. What Chromium is doing, they hard coded that to local host IP, so they mark that a secure context. In the case of Firefox, it's not the case yet, but it will be. Uh, so if anyone wants to follow this issue, there's like last, like two weeks ago, there was a patch which gave us both like a secure context, uh, hard code IP, but it's not there yet. Seems there are some bugs they need to fix first. But I so mean, from a user experience standpoint, there's still local host in the URL bar and a port number. So we still have some work to do, but we're step by step, we're getting closer. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Uh, yep, so that's the announcement. Another quick uh, uh, announcement well, slash update is subdomain in uh, IPFS Companion. It was scheduled to land last week, but it did not because I continue to find new bugs and edge cases. Uh, and this one is interesting, so I thought I would share. So it's about sub-resource quirks. So it's easy. When, we, when you open an entire website, it gets redirected to a subdomain. And that's it, like everything, it's loaded from the same origin. But what happens if you got a regular HTTPS web page, and that web page has some IPFS resources uh, embedded as sub like as a sub resource? For example, you are on a page, and this image uh, could be loaded from IPFS.io or some other public uh, gateway. So. What happens in that mixed environment when you have a regular website, but someone embedded image from IPFS gateway, and we want IPFS companion to leverage the fact that we have a local node and load every IPFS resource from local node instead of a public gateway. 
Uh, this is what Companion is doing right now. If it finds IPFS resource on a page, let's say it's a public forum and someone embedded an image from a public gateway, it will redirect that specific image, not the entire website, which is not on IPFS, but that specific image will be loaded from IPFS. Uh, the problem is like most of websites are uh, secure context. They are loaded from HTTPS and if we try to load a um, sub resource from insecure context, that request will get blocked. And here where it gets interesting. So I made a test page to illustrate this. Um, this is, uh, I have a previous beta version of Companion, which does not ship with the fix yet, but it demonstrates the problem. So here, this is a hack, hack uh, MD. It's HTTPS page. And that page has an embedded image from our public gateway. Uh, so you can see here, the image did not load. And why did it did not load? Uh, because the image location is a public gateway. However, IPFS companion will redirect that to a subdomain. And that subdomain, as we discussed bef like moments before, is not secure context yet. So it's like, oh, Rube Rub 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 Goldberg's machine which ends up with image not working. Uh, however, I found a way we basically would use path, uh, path gateway for sub resources for now in Firefox. Um, I think there's a separate bug in Chromium where they may be a little bit over the top with, uh, like they are on the side, uh, safe side on the security and they kind of hard code uh, HTTPS protocol when you use proxy setup. So I think there is either a, a bug or a feature. I need to research it a little bit more. However, the same fix which fixed this should fix uh, it in Chromium. Um, but this is like just to illustrate it's um, if we want to leverage IPFS companion to, to its like limits of what's it's possible. Uh, we, we we need to address uh, this before we ship subdomains because I had a lot of hackpads where I had images from IPFS and those stopped working and I need to fix that first. Uh, so that's my uh, quick update. I hope to land a beta with the fix today or tomorrow and hopefully we'll, uh, that will be it and we'll ship to the stable channel. Um, the next one, uh, any questions uh, around this? before we move to the next one. All right. Um, Dietrich, do you want to take the Oprah one? Sure, I, I will start by thanking you for all of the hard work you did in setting up a test page, for example, that you just showed us uh, that led to the, the launch of Opera Browser yesterday for Android, uh, the day before yesterday, technically, but it really got staggered out into the play stores across all the regions by Tuesday morning Pacific time. It, would, it had shown up for me in East Coast US uh, in the play store. But yeah, Opera for Android, it, number 57 for them, uh, launched with IPFS protocol support. It can load most of our addressing spec, but still has a couple of bugs. We also discovered a link breaking bug where the settings panel is not available. Uh, and they're going to ship a, an update that looks like in the next week or two that will fix that. So you can actually then choose your gateway as we advertised in our blog post. But overall, reception has been really, really good. Um, you know, Opera is an interesting character in browser world. Uh, they have uh, they have an estimated around quarter of a million or a uh, quarter of a billion users, they're saying. Like, I think their public numbers are like 225 million worldwide or something like that across all markets and products. Um, they have some interesting products like uh, TV, which is a chunk of their revenue, where they have applications and services. Um, and then they have uh, a number of different browsers on smartphones, desktop, uh, dumb phones, and uh, different variations of some of these devices. Um, the Opera Mini has deep penetration in um, non-smartphone markets in Africa. So it's re really interesting. And then the, the company itself also sold to a uh, kind of a, a investment conglomerate uh, based in China a couple of years ago. So it's just a, a unique character. Uh, the a source is not open to the browser as well, which makes it an interesting partner to work with.
but they're very supportive of Web3 use cases and stocks and developer needs, which really, um, I profess support was a kind of easy decision, I think, from their end to make it, to smoothen the developer pathway there, uh, to make it so that, that Web3 apps could load easily in, in their mobile browser. Very interesting as well that they're choosing mobile first, uh, which really speaks to a developer demand from that segment for them. And that's something that uh, in other efforts uh, that we have at PL around um, nascent support for mobile use cases, workflows, scenarios, business cases, are going to see more and more of this over, over the next year. Uh, but overall, really positive uh, replies uh, in social from the launch, a bunch of different press coverage. Um, they they called it basically like their, their crypto browser and uh, that really got a lot of play in the in, in obviously the crypto world, but um, in some larger uh, tech press and business press as well. Um, so, uh, and IPFS has mentioned in almost all of those in their official press release. IPFS was the first thing mentioned in their list of features, so that was a a, a big win. Um, and try to get some fixes into that press release around things like consistent use of address. Uh, or um, content addressing. Uh, it, there's some work I think that we have to do around educating on the recommended language to use when talking about these things. Uh, uh, still using location interchangeably or uh, interchangeably, location bar, things like that. But overall, definitely successful release. Uh, def a huge, huge moment for P2P, I think. And then it's probably one of the larger places where an actual, at least, at least close enough one degree of separation from the actual P2P network has been, been deployed to folks. We don't have access to things like absolute numbers and statistics and metrics around usage uh, from them, but um, you know, I'm, I'm definitely investigating ways that we can understand that, especially um, given either gateway metrics or things like that, but um, so far, all good for the most part. It's awesome. Uh, just uh, just a quick uh, highlight that uh, they launched. However, the rollout on the Android may be delayed depending on the region you are in. So uh, if it's uh, you, you, you can install it from the uh, Play Store on Android. Uh, however, the version do, that you've installed may not have it. Like at least that was the case in the mid beginning of the week. However, maybe it rolled yeah, out. Yeah, by Tuesday morning, I think it was 100% rolled out. Oh, yeah. Said. Yeah. Then it's fine. Go. It's just that, that first 24 hours was, yes. Like even even in the, in the US, the Play Store wasn't updated. Or like you're getting conflicting things like the release date on the web page of the Play Store had the correct date, but then the actual one in the Play Store on the device itself didn't. Yep. Awesome, awesome. It, it's su super exciting, especially given that it's the first time uh, the m like mainstream web browser supports uh, content address uh, content addressed resources as the first class citizen. Because just like I shared before, like you you have this uh, IPFS colon slash slash CID link, and you don't specify location and your browser will just get it. And that's pretty powerful. Uh, the fact that it's a delegated IPFS client, uh, all that stuff is like important, but I think that's the, when we look back, that would be like the first step uh, into like moving away from location addressing. Uh, su super awesome. Thank you, Dietrich, for uh, pushing this forward. Um, Hugo, are you here? Can you tell us about browser data store changes? I've been told there's a new data store for JS. Yes. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. I think I'm having some problems with Zoom because I don't see any of your faces. But if you can hear me, I'll explain it. Yep, we can hear you. Uh, so um, I'm doing a bunch of work related to like removing um, no globals uh, and stuff like that. Uh, so basically our code base uh, has a lot of, um, expects a lot of stuff that it's only available in Node. So I'm doing some changes so the browser integration is easier uh, with bundlers and all that stuff. So I got stuck a little bit on the data store that we have that uses, 
use level DB. So I did some work trying to move the level DB repos to a um, node global free environment, but uh, I was getting stuck a lot uh, because there's so many repos, so many interactions and, and abstractions. Uh, so basically, I have been wanting to do a new database uh, for a long time. So yeah, I did it. You have the, the repo there. Um, it's, uh, it uses directly IndexedDB in the browser. So there's no wrapper around IndexedDB like LevelDB um, does. Uh, and actually, we, we didn't need it. Like for Node, it might be, we might have some advantages by using LevelDB, but in the browser, it was just a wrapper around IndexedDB, so it was mostly uh, extra code wrapping everything. So as you can see, the, the bundle size is smaller. Uh, it's a little bit faster. Uh, I'm still seeing like uh, LevelDB uh, or LevelJS, which is the browser version of LevelDB. Uh, I think it's still in lines a little bit better. So if you run it like, three or four times, level DB starts to be a little bit faster than uh, the new data store, but I should be able to uh, work around it and optimize the code base. Uh, but mostly it's easier, it's uh, smaller, it's uh, the, like maintaining it, maintaining it it's, it's gonna be much simpler because it's just a few lines of code. Uh, so yeah, that's basically it. Awesome. Um, I got two questions. First question is, um, what's the plan for populating this and making it the default uh, in JS IPFS? Because uh, I, I understand that we will probably replace the level DB in the browser bundle with this one, right? Uh, yes. So what's the question specifically? Are you worried oh. about something? Oh, like, uh, I, I'm, I'm not worried. I just wanted to confirm that eventually this will be the default in JS APFS. Um, and uh, another thing is I've been playing with Riot, uh, the ma ma Matrix uh, client recently, and it had this pop-up asking me, do you want to grant this uh, page a persistent uh, data storage? Which, re which reminded me uh, about our discussion. <laughs> of, <laughs> So uh, uh, wh while we will make it the default, we probably will uh, add this configuration option to uh, give a website developer ability to request the permanent storage, I guess. Um, so that's more uh, for people watching this video okay. than, uh, than yes. for you, because we are on the same page. Um, yeah, yes. so stay tuned. So right now, right now th this will be swapped. Um, in the in the JS uh, but right now it will function exactly in the same way that we have it right now. There's no changes to like the final result. Like the top level API will function the same way. There's no new notifications. Uh, everything will stay the same. Um, just a little bit smaller, a little bit faster, and a lot easier to maintain. Those changes that you talked, uh, that's future work that uh, we will definitely need to get to. Yeah, totally. Awesome. Thank you so much for, for pushing this forward. Um, uh, just a question uh, When do you expect this to, to be integrated in JSAPFS? As, as I will be working soon on the uh, persistence for the peer store, and it would be cool to already use it. Um, as fast as possible. <laughs> so right now, um, I'm just waiting for uh, a couple of PRs to be merged. Um, this data, um, I just finished like uh, IPFS repo tests. Uh, so everything is green. Um, so at least up and well, up to IPFS repo, everything just needs to be merged. Um, so after after that, as you know, I. I need to, to get, make sure JSFFS still works and all that. But right now I just need PRs to be reviewed and merged. 
um, and everything should be available like hopefully this week but yeah in GSWFS I don't know maybe next week it depends on how fast I, get, I can get people to review and merge PRs okay that's that's cool I think right awesome uh, any remaining questions uh, about Hugo's data store oh just one remark yeah uh, I saw uh, this is mostly for like core developers or contributors that already dealt with uh, repo uh, or anything related to data stores I saw in a lot of places like uh, the data stores being used without calling uh, the open method because some of the um, I don't even know how, how why this was like uh, all over the code base but uh, you need to call open on a database at least on this one on uh, if you don't call open you'll get an error explaining it I added specific for this use case because in a lot of places the open method was not being called uh, and at least for this one you need to call it or it doesn't work so you'll get an error telling you data store needs to be open so if you see that you already know what you need to do you need to call open in a data store Awesome. Um, protocol handler API grant update. I'll make this brief. Um, we are discussing uh, the grant to add native protocol handler for browser extensions. So this will be a generic API. I believe we discussed it uh, a few times before. So here I will just uh, give a quick update that we have a discussion with Igalia about uh, some details uh, to flesh out uh, maintain, uh, milestones mostly. Uh, for example, one of, uh, one of those is the API for registering redirect-based um, protocol handler, which is not supported by Chromium yet. So um, there is this API which lets Firefox users, uh, Firefox extension users to, to register a redirect based protocol handler. In our case, we redirect our public gateway, uh, but it's just a redirect. You, we are not able to return the payload, but still it's something. And Chrome, Chromium project uh, do not have this. Uh, I filled an issue some time ago, and it's the issue was marked as valid. However, no one cares about it. So unless we do this uh, as a part of this grant, it won't happen. And I feel it's probably a good milestone to first uh, deliver feature parity with Firefox. Uh, so get to the level of redirects being supported in both places and being able for a, like extension being able to register a protocol handler and then build this native handler which is capable of returning bytes on top of this um, so this is like a quick update uh, we'll probably uh, continue discussion in this long 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 uh, long uh, pull request uh, however i just wanted to highlight that the discussion is happening And the next one is the P2P PubSub uh, based peer discovery. Yeah, so PubSub options in the browser are pretty limited at the moment. Um, and they usually evolve some, some middle server um, that has a bunch of like weird logic in there uh, to make that happen. So uh, this past weekend, I stubbed out the initial uh, work for a PubSub based peer discovery module. Um, and it's mostly done. I'm just working on some integration with a, a relay server. But ultimately what this does is it just requires that a JS lib P2P node or JS IPFS node run PubSub um, and then it subscribes to a global namespace. So it's, it's very much like MDNS in the browser, um, but on a global namespace. And so what this will allow us to do is to query via pub, PubSub publishes and then everybody able, will be able to respond to those queries. And so we can get peer discovery there 
um, which is great because now we don't have to be like, we don't have to have the same intermediary node. We could actually potentially be multiple hops away from a peer, discover them through PubSub, and then be able to connect through whatever listener those peers are on. So it's great for the future. Uh, one of the things that I'm going to be working on before this gets released is actually being able to um, namespace your discovery so that you'd be able to do like application specific namespacing for, for peer discovery instead of just binding to the to the global uh, peer discovery space. This is super cool, uh, especially the namespacing part because the way MDNS works, it basically shouts to everyone on the local network, hey, I'm here, those are my addresses. Uh, and uh, in case of the web, that's sort of like a local local network is the origin. So I believe in the JS IPFS, that like if we talk about safe default, we probably would not put everyone on the same uh, like namespace. I'm not sure how that would scale. Uh, if it get, like, gets a lot of usage. Uh, however, if we like make a, it bind to an origin and everyone who's loading uh, JSIPFS or JSLIP P2P from the same origin can see each other, I think that's much safer default. Uh, however, like it's a module. Uh, so people could have like multiple instances, like one for one origin, one for like across multiple origins for the same company or suite of products. Uh, who knows? Uh, and they could be a global one with like best effort, right? Uh, yeah, I think likely what we'll see is the exciting. stuff that we host for, um, like we'll end up deploying a relay server that listens to this, that it will probably have like maybe its own namespace. And so this kind of like handles like the Stardust or WebSocket star server of like, okay, this is everybody who's intended to be connecting to this point. Um, and then potentially you could also subscribe to, to multiple things, but that would be something I need to add to is being able to uh, subscribe to multiple namespaces and respond to those queries appropriately. That would be, that would be helpful. I think. Uh, yeah, that, that's a, that's a great, sorry, Dietrich, you were first. Uh, it's okay. I just wanted to say that I'm, I'm really happy to see this uh, this prophecy foretold uh, that eventually, slowly, bit by bit, all of IPFS will be implemented over at PubSub. And this is just a one of the initial steps down the road. Very exciting. PubSub is the world. Um, yeah, and my question was uh, what makes more sense to implement support? for listening on multiple namespaces or just uh, taking a namespace like a template in a constructor and if someone wants to listen on multiple namespaces they just initialize the same module multiple times is there like a performance consideration or is it just like i mean you could i mean the only i mean the only performance issue you'd really have is like the extra objects which is tiny right because it's not going to affect anything else you're still just subscribing to events so yeah i, I just wonder how people are using uh, when people create a custom lip p2p setup or a custom like jsipfs but effectively pass a custom lip p2p setup how they how they use uh, the same do they use the same module multiple times uh, it's hard to tell. Yeah, to not tell. currently, and partly because like lip p configuration is uh, daunting at the moment. Um, but we have an initiative to clean that up and make that like a much more functional approach to configuring lip p and that would provide a lot more flexibility to be able to say, okay, I'm just going to instantiate this PubSub module like five times, and then pass that into the the discovery services, and then call it a day. Yeah. So that would be yeah. an option in the future. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. Like some people may may prefer that approach. Uh, Hugo, I believe you have a hand raised. Yeah, um, I would like to ask: How are you uh, kind of testing this stuff? Are you handling uh, like multiple browsers and checking if uh, they can discover each other and stuff like that? 
Uh, yeah, that's what I'm going to get to um, at the next spot. Like this, the module is pretty close to being ready. Um, the major thing I have right now is I'm configuring. I've got a repo where I'm just building out a pre-configured relay server so that people will be able to like deploy it from a Docker container. And in there, I have a test suite that uses this. Um, and then it's running like Azure to actually test across the browsers to make sure that peer discovery is working. So that relay server is doing a lot of integration testing right now. Cool. Uh, one quick question. Uh, I'm looking. Uh, I was looking through the code. I saw you start using Imitri, um, uh, the events package uh, we talked about. Did you? Um, it was seamless, like using it uh, comparing to the normal event emitter from Node, or did you have, did you have some issues with it? The main issue is that it does not. Imitri does not support remove listener. Um, and so that creates that created some problems because libp2p actually is using remove listener instead of off, um, and emitter only supports off. And so that was something that I just had to to add in remove listener method to resolve that. So there's some considerations there of it basically only applies to like it's emitter only supports node ten events syntax. So. Okay, thank you. Super, super excited for this one. Um, Q2 OKRs for browser uh, and connectivity. Yep, so there's just an ask for me. I'm migrating all the OKRs from the uh, HackMD doc where we drafted them and putting them into the PR and putting them into the spreadsheet and things like this, uh, because all things done well must be done in triplicate. So, but one thing I found here is that I, uh, I understand with, generally the impact because i ask you all about it every week here in this meeting and some of the other ones as well but what the impact of some of this work is but if you could do me a favor and for your okrs there it's a list of issues but it isn't clear what the impact of the, some of those issues are and why this work needs to be done so for each one of your okrs for uh Lytle, jacob and Vashko, can you just add a couple of contextual words there that say because it will reduce page load time or reduce bundle size or uh, re uh reduce time for reconnects for browser-based nodes just add that little bit of contextual information there because then I can more easily roll it up into how the story that we're telling around uh, uh, our focus on, on increasing adoption by making browser nodes faster, easier to use, simpler to use, things like that. Is it in uh, in a spreadsheet somewhere or are we talking about uh, that? Uh, hack, yeah, no, hack do it in the HackMD and then I'm gonna migrate it over there. Over, okay. to the, over to the sheet and then into the, the PR in the team engineering repo as well. Cool. Thank uh, you. No yeah, <laughs> no releases this week, uh, unless I missed something. And I believe we are at the end of agenda. So it's a time for open topics or we can, uh, if there are no topics, we will probably wrap up sooner. But Think about open topics, any questions, concerns, ideas you want to share. Mm. Has anybody poked at MetaMask plugins yet? I don't believe so. I I I had a discussion with uh, with Brave if they are supporting it right now because Brave is uh, shipping with fork. a fork, uh, but there are like few at the time there were a few versions behind versions behind, so nothing since then. Should we? Like, that's a good question. Like, would that be a grant, like a grant adoption grant of sorts? I think so. I would, I would absolutely be interested in a micro grant to at least explore what the capabilities are and what, like, if somebody spends a week just focusing on identifying what they are, if we can use them, what are, do they give us any more browser superpowers that we wouldn't otherwise have? Yeah, makes makes sense. Uh, probably, we should sh should create a, a yet another draft of a grant to discuss. Um, at least the probe the waters if someone is interested in, in doing that work. 
Yeah, I mean, maybe that's even just a good bounty for, you know, like 500 bucks for somebody to do a, write up a memo. And then maybe, you know, follow on work would be a, a micro grant for, a, for building up a proof of concept or something like that. Makes sense. Add that to the notes so we don't forget. Um, right. Uh, I know that we have Chris and Chris uh, has been around for, for a week or two. However, we got a new uh, friend uh, on this call uh, who's muted. However, maybe a agent of user could uh, say a few words, say hi. If not, it's fine. Oh, hello. Um, yeah, hi. Hi, everyone. This is Elder. I wasn't sure if this was the right place to join. I just wanted to lurk in <laughs> and uh, hear the meeting. Uh, I've been keeping up with KFS for a while now and uh, had a great talk with Lytle the other day. Um, so, yeah, that's me, Elder. Nice to meet you all much to add at this moment but it was a great pleasure to be part of the meeting uh, so thanks for all you've been doing for IPFS it's a great project that I uh, have a good, uh, good feelings towards <laughs> here awesome. hey, uh, thanks for IPFS deploy IPFS deploy super <laughs> useful everybody loved it I was about to share that uh, that uh, you are very a very modest person because you are the person behind IPFS deploy, which is this very cool command line tool uh, you created initially. Uh, it's a su super useful command line tool for quickly publishing a website to IPFS with things like pinning, uh, with uh, pinning services. So if someone is watching this and is using this, then now you know who created it. I'm, I'm very glad you all like it. <laughs> it's so, super fun to see uh, people like taking our ideas and like running with them and delivering something even better than what we've imagined. It's the best feeling. Um, all right, folks. Um, any, I, I did add yeah. one more thing that I can't believe I forgot, which is what Alan shared on Monday which is the IPFS browser sandbox project. Uh, his, his little weekend project was a electron based browser that loads IPFS directly, similar to how Beaker does with that. Um, and I have a screen open this one here. Uh, it's already on GitHub. The idea is that it, it's not, we're not you know, going to ship it as a browser, but it's a place where people can experiment and we can show what the IPFS based desktop browser will look like. Uh, we've talked a lot about this in, in the past around um, having an experimental vehicle, a place where we can uh, say, for example, implement the browser design guidelines or implement the address and spec and play with that idea in an extensibility, extensible way. So uh, where we can take some of the ideas that we have, be able to demo them in a, in a way that's fast and easy. Um, uh, Unstoppable Browser did this a couple of, of weeks, months ago now, uh, where they released kind of a similar idea where they had some of their technology wired up to in browser nodes. Um, and with Electron, it, it makes this really, really easy. So this is a place where if you're interested, pull down the source, take a look, hack on it. It's a place where we can play with different developer patterns, user patterns, design patterns, but things like location bar, security, privacy. Um, hopefully we will uh, use it as a tool for experimenting and prototyping some of the ideas that we have and use it as a tool for communicating to browsers so they can actually have a, the, the visceral and tangible experience of what these technologies might look like, how they might behave, uh, what sort of the visual communication challenges are. But thanks, Alan, for spinning this up. You should show the logo. He made a logo. <laughs> there is a logo. Boom. Yeah, just it just shows the attention to the detail. Yeah, yeah. There's even a logo, right? Yeah, we spent uh, a whole forty hours building it, though. So who knows? <laughs> yeah, logos look good, but it's one of those things you could end up wasting a lot of time on. But it certainly does make it seem more professional and official. So that's cool. Yeah, the, the watermark on the new tab that you open there.
Yeah, Def definitely will be a very useful space to experiment with, if, if, even like with the way the pro protocol handler, the old school protocol handler looks like. Because uh, right now it's using the paths, which is like so far ahead. Um, cool. So link to that is in, in the notes. I'll give you some silence now in case you want to bring up topics or share something. If you don't have any ad hoc thoughts, we can always uh, make it a bit shorter this week. It was super action packed. I feel like it was a lot. However, we finished 15 minutes earlier. So either, I don't know, it's, it's the efficiency of doing something over and over again, I think. All right, folks, um, I think I'll give you back your 15 minutes. Uh, thank you for everyone who's watching. Thank you for everyone who shared projects or thoughts and ideas or updates. And see you next week. Bye. Bye.